What's up everyone? In this video we're going to be reviewing everything we talked about in the last six videos or so whenever we did the last review. So we're going to be talking about split, getting user input, and the stacks and the queues just to get everything, you know, perman permanented in our brain so we can move on to the next section. So let's just run through this code and see what we get. So the very first thing is how to split data and by default it's going to split it by spaces. So pay attention to each word that I say is split up one word at a time coming from this message string. You can change the default behavior by passing in some character or some sequence of characters into split and that's what it's going to look for. So in this situation it's looking for a comma. So when we say this is important data we split it by commas and this might be what a comma separated value file would look like and that is how you would get a list like so. You can also split by line, so anytime there's a new line character, it's going to be a new piece of data, and you can do that using backslash n. We print the message here just to see how it's stored, so we can see where the new line characters are. And just as a reminder, anytime we see this backslash here, it's basically saying ignore that new line character. So you can modify how the string is stored by putting the backslashes there. So you can see that everything is on its own line here and then each line ends up being an element in the list. Next up, we get input using split. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell them to split data by comma and a space. So here's an example of kale, bok choy, Brussels sprouts. And this is where we get input here. So let's go through an example input, broccoli. And I literally failed because I just hit enter. So there's a downfall. If they accidentally hit enter, <laughs> instead of putting a comma in a space, well then it just ends. So the obvious fix for that is to use a loop where enter will actually be a new element. So that's why I show you guys here where we basically make an indefinite loop that's going to end with the letter Q to quit. And we're gonna lowercase it such that if they put a capital Q, it works just fine. We're gonna get input. And if they put Q, we break. Otherwise, we append that data to the list. So here's an example of that. We can say bok choy, pretzels. I don't even know if that's spelled right. How do you guys spell pretzels? All right, we good, we good. Sorry guys, I'm terrible at spelling, so just trying to learn, you know? And then lastly, my favorite vegetable of all is burrito, and then we'll hit Q to quit, and all of the feuds are bok choy, pretzel, and burrito. Now, next up, we go through stacks and queues. So with a stack, everything that we add is going to be removed first. So it's like a stack of plates, we have to take the top one off to get to the, the lower ones. So we can add foods in here, bok choy, pretzel, and then if we remove an element, it's going to remove the most recently added one, which was pretzel. We can hit Q to go to the Q variation, and in this situation, it's always going to remove the first one we put in there. So if we put bok choy in here first, then we add pretzel and burrito. If we say eat to remove, it's going to remove from the left. Specifically, it removes bok choy first, and then it removes pretzel, and then burrito, and then R, which I didn't even mean to put in there, and then it's an empty list, and then we eat nothing, and the world explodes. So don't do that. So that is our review. Hopefully you guys understand everything, understand the difference between a stack and a queue. Next up, we're gonna get experience working with 2D lists as well as sorting data. So we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Stay tuned for that, and I'll see you then. And if you've enjoyed the series so far, please be sure to hit subscribe.